How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can improve your live stream setup when working from home. Now obviously, if you're looking at this video, you're probably thinking, what in the world, how are you recommending improving video when your video looks terrible, right? This is on purpose though. I purposely made it as terrible as possible. So we could talk about some of the things you can do to improve your live stream setup. So whether you're working, uh, you're talking to a friend via FaceTime, just casually, or you're conducting a meeting via Zoom, or if you're doing an interview via Skype, there's some definite things you can do to improve the quality of your live streams. So yes, we're gonna fix all this up. And we're gonna make it look a lot better. Check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. In this video, we're not discussing different types of live streaming platforms because none of that really matters. But what matters is your basic stuff like framing. For instance, here, I'm halfway out of the frame or bad lighting. You can see the, the reflection in my glasses and just overall terrible lighting. The background is questionable. There's a lot of things I could fix with that. Uh, there's also <laughs> terrible camera quality and sound is obviously a problem as well in that test video. With 9to5Mac, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can improve your live stream setup when working from home. Now, obviously, if you're looking at this video, you're probably thinking, what in the world? How are you recommending improving video when your video looks terrible, right? All right, so let's start with probably the most important thing of all, and that is lighting. Now, I am not what I would call a lighting expert by any stretch of the imagination, but just some basic concepts that you can employ in your setup. If you're shooting in the daytime, you have a lot of natural light at your disposal. I recommend using that. I personally like the look of natural light. Uh, so I just open up the blinds, get some natural light coming in there. Now, obviously that's not always a possibility, so you just have to use what you have around the house, such as, you know, typical light bulb, typical lamp, have that set up. You can also purchase specific lights that are made for video on Amazon. So this is one from Luxly. Uh, this is a more expensive light because it's an RGB light. Uh, you can get much cheaper ones on Amazon as well that will do just fine for this type of setup. Now in my office, I have tons of lights. I have uh, pancake lights, I have uh, one by ones, I have RGB lighting. I have overhead lighting to accentuate hair and things like that. But one of my favorite little tools is just a piece of foam core. And you can get this cheap at any art supply store or hardware store. And basically I use that to reflect light and it works really well. So you can use any sort of light source, bounce it off of that foam core, and that's gonna provide you with some nice looking light on your face. Uh, and it's not gonna be overly harsh or anything like that. I recommend just adjusting it, playing with it, playing with the distance of your light, things of that nature to get the perfect look for you. But like I said, I am far from an expert at this sort of thing. I highly recommend visiting my friend Caleb Pike over at DSLR Video Shooter. He actually has a, an entire playlist just dedicated to lighting and it is absolutely fantastic. So I highly recommend you check him out. Go give him a subscribe. Super cool dude and uh, knows a lot about lighting. It can help you out big time. Now let's talk about camera because a lot of people are gonna be just simply using their webcam on their MacBook or MacBook Pro. And that's totally understandable because I mean, it's a camera that's right in front of you and it's easy to use, right? But these cameras are very, very dependent on having enough light. If you don't have enough light, they're gonna look absolutely horrific. So please, please have enough light if you're gonna be using your MacBook webcam. And another tip is to make sure that the webcam is at eye level. Don't have it down below you where it's looking up at you and it just looks weird. It doesn't look very good. Have it at eye level. That way you can look straight at the camera and the framing is gonna be a lot better that way once you do that. So just something to keep in mind when using your laptop webcam. Now, although I understand why people just simply like to use their webcam on their MacBook Pro, I highly recommend that if you have any other option, because these cameras just don't perform all that well. Even when you have a lot of light, they still aren't all that great. So if you can, it might be worth investing in a standalone webcam. Uh, that's something like this right here from Logitech. This is a 4K camera 
for the Pro Display XDR specifically. I haven't yet reviewed this camera because I've kind of had mixed feelings about it. That being said, if you go into the Logitech software and you tweak the picture profile, uh, you can come up with something that looks fairly good. Uh, but again, like I said, still sort of a mixed bag. I'm still debating on whether or not I'm gonna review this thing. But here it is. This is the Logitech 4K camera for the Pro Display XDR. You can see the quality is much better than what you find on the MacBook Air 720p FaceTime HD camera. And you can see me using that bounce light. And, you know, I think it looks fairly decent at this point. Obviously that background needs a little work. We'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, so let's talk about another camera option, one that we all have in our pockets probably, and that is of course the iPhone. Now the iPhone 11 Pro Max that I have right here has an outstanding front facing camera, but one of the biggest downsides about the iPhone is trying to get that perfect angle. That's why I'm using this little stand here. Uh, this stand is actually pretty awesome. However, it still isn't at the most ideal viewing angle. It needs to be angled just a little bit more so I actually put something under the stand. And I also placed the phone on a box to ensure that the camera was at eye level because like I said, if it's not at eye level, it just sort of looks weird. The framing's a little off. Uh, another thing you wanna avoid is holding your phone while you're live streaming, please don't do that. It just doesn't look good at all. It's real shaky and all that. By the way, this stand is from our friends over at Whip Labs. I'll have a link down below in the description if you're interested. But here is what the live setup looks like here on my iPhone. Uh, I have some bounce light going on there. Obviously the background still needs work, but the iPhone makes for a decent live stream camera. Now this final option is a standalone mirrorless camera and this is going to provide you with the best looking picture by far uh, because you have an interchangeable lens, you can adjust the aperture, get that shallow depth of field that's so nice when you wanna hide what's in the background and you may be wondering, how do you live stream from a standalone camera like that? Well, I'm using the Deck Link Mini Recorder 4K from Blackmagic, I actually have two of them here, but what I'm doing is I'm connecting the HDMI output from the camera going into this guy. This guy connects to Thunderbolt 3 back to my Mac and that allows me to use my standalone camera as a camera source for my live stream. So whatever live stream I like to use, whether it be Zoom or Skype, I can use a standalone camera with that and that provides you by far with the best picture. You can adjust things like white balance and all the other really nitpicky settings that allow you to obtain a much better picture than you would with an iPhone or with a MacBook webcam, for instance. So if you can pull this off, I do highly recommend going this route if you're really particular about the way your setup looks. Now let's talk about framing because this can really make or break the way your live stream setup looks. Here I'm cut off the frame, it looks terrible. Don't do that. Also, don't do this. Don't have your laptop lid resting below your face pointed upwards. It just doesn't look all that good. Uh, this is a more ideal framing setup, perfectly in frame there. Obviously, you can adjust it to work with your particular needs and setup, but that's just an example. Now, the background has been a problem throughout this entire video, so we're gonna flip the script a little bit and switch up the background. So basically, I'm just gonna turn around and instead of looking at that in the background, now we have a much nicer background, got some shallow depth of field going on thanks to that standalone camera. This looks a lot better than what we had going on before. Now, another important thing is sound quality. This is something that's often overlooked. I personally recommend not just using the built-in microphone on your MacBook Pro or your iPhone. If you want an easy to use solution, I recommend something like the AirPods Pro. Now granted, it doesn't have the best microphone or the best speaker output, but it's decent, right? And it's also going to make it so that you don't have feedback coming from the speakers, being piped back through the microphone causing feedback. So it's gonna eliminate the feedback loop and it's also gonna provide you with a fairly decent sounding microphone. Not the best microphone, but definitely better than the built-in MacBook microphone. Now, if you really wanna take it up a notch, you can use an audio interface coupled with a standalone microphone like this one from Sennheiser, or you can use a lavalier 
like this one from Sennheiser. Uh, it really just depends on your needs. You can use just a standalone USB microphone as well, like a Blue Yeti. The key is just trying not to rely on the built-in microphone on your MacBook or the built-in microphone on your iPhone. Try to have a microphone that's a little bit closer to your mouth and try to have headphones so you eliminate the feedback loop. Now, the last thing is network. If possible, and a lot of times it's not always possible, but if possible, try to use Ethernet if you're using a Mac. You can also use Ethernet with an iOS device, and generally speaking, Ethernet's gonna give you a more solid connection for your live stream. So the point of this video, folks, wasn't to tell you which live streaming service to use, uh, it isn't even to really recommend any sort of hardware or software. Really, it's to point out some of the common mistakes that we make and how to fix those mistakes. The way you go about addressing those mistakes is up to you. These are just suggestions. Like I said, I'm not an expert cinematographer or anything like that, but hopefully these, these particular tips will help you out. Let me know what you guys think down below. Also, if you have any other tips you like to share, please share them down below as well. Thank you for watching. This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. Happy live streaming, everybody, while you're working from home. Take care.